Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's everybody? TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Glad to see all of you. TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. As I already said, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to greet you in this Advent season as we anticipate God's unspeakable and most miraculous gift to the world, Jesus the Christ. Listen, Jesus is the reason for the season. Let's not allow, allow the merchants and the commercial industry to take the Christ out of Christmas. Christmas, by definition, Christmas, mass celebration of Christ. So let's get out there, let people know that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the reason for the season. We love him. We thank God for him because he walks with us. He talks with us. And every now and then we have the calm assurance that he belongs to us and he belongs to, and we belong to him. And as I say often, even at the church and during our worship experience, there's no problem that can happen that we together with God cannot solve. Somebody even now give him praise, honor, and glory. I mean, can you believe it? We, we're in the second year of this serious pandemic. Now we have another variant, but if you're alive and you've not had COVID, then we give God praise, honor, and glory. If you had COVID and you recovered, give God praise, honor, and glory. Almost 800,000 people in our nation have lost their lives to this virus, this pandemic. But God, for no reason that we can even imagine, through no goodness of our own, has kept us. And so I give him praise, honor, and glory. Okay, a few notices and announcements very, very quickly. Um, please join us on Sunday. I have a word. I want to talk about the favor and joy that comes in the Advent season. You want to join us for that word on Sunday. Do you have a funeral here tonight? Um, Sister McCoy, Mag Maggot McCoy. I understand she was a member of our church. She transitioned. Anyway, uh, she has not been here for many, many years, but I was in touch with the family. And, you know, God calls us to be a blessing. So we're going to open up our doors of our church tonight. Viewing will be from 4 to 7. Service will start promptly at 7 o'clock. Um, and you know what? When one of us hurts, all of us hurt. And I talked to her daughter. Anybody that has lost a mother or a significant loved one know how difficult it is. And so I hope that if you can, even though you don't know the person, but just your presence would be a blessing. Also, you want to join us on next week, Sunday. Next week, Sunday, we will have our Christmas concert. And we're going to be talking about the joyous sounds of Christmas. And our choir, music ministry is participating and practicing and getting ready. We're asking for a contribution of only $10. You want to be here. We will also live stream that concert so that you'll be able to see it there. You also want to join us for our Christmas Eve service, which will commence on Christmas Eve at 730. That service will also be live streamed. So if you can't be here, we will live stream the service and it'll come directly to you wherever you are. But you know what? The Bible says, forget not the assembling yourselves together and so much more as you see the day approaching. Um, the Bible also reminds us that where two or three are gathered together in his name, God has promised to meet us here. We're going to follow all of the CDC regulations, social distancing, keep people safe. But, you know, if you can come and be in worship, that's fine. If not, we'll meet you virtually um, just go to Salem's Facebook page or YouTube page, and you should be able to find us there. We're still working on trying to tweak and update our technology. This is something really new for us, too. I mean, this is just a time that we've never seen before. But God is good and is worthy to be praised. All right, let's go to the word. I don't want to keep it too long. Um, yesterday, we talked out of Matthew's gospel, and we looked at the Christmas message through the eyes of Joseph. And uh, we know that he was destroyed when he learned that his wife had become impregnated and they had come together in engagement. And it was a really a scandalous time um, for Joseph. But through prayer and faith and obedience to God, 
He was able to work it out and became a supporter and a contributor to our greatest gift to the world, Jesus the Christ. And God elevated him in that he became the earthly father of the savior of the world. You know what? God has something in store for you. If we can just be obedient, we can just trust him. We can have faith, not just faith to believe, but the faith that will move us to action in spite of that that we cannot see. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is a subject of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen without faith is impossible to please God, but one that comes to him must believe that he is his reward of those that diligently seek him. Let's go straight to the word now. I'm in Luke chapter 1, commencing with verse 26. Here it is. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel, the same angel, the same angel that came to Joseph. Gabriel is the messenger angel. He's busy during this season. To Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I'm going to preach about this on tomorrow, on Sunday. You know what? Sometimes we want a whole lot of stuff, material things. Um, we want to be popular. We want power. We want prestige. But let me tell you, when you have the favor of God, the favor of God can take you where you don't even dream that you could go. Here is Mary. She's a peasant woman. Nobody knows her. She's in an obscure place or in the outskirts of town. She's poor. Nobody ever heard of her. But God has a way of elevating you when he decides to bestow his favor upon you. And people will wonder, how did you get to where you are? Because you have the favor of God. I'm sitting in this seat right now talking to you, not because I've been that good, neither have I been that smart, but because of God's favor. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. She was worried. This is going to be a problem. She's troubled. What is Joseph going to say? What are the people in the community going to say? You know how people talk about you. I mean, church people, somebody said, there's no hurt like church hurt. I mean, you ain't been talked about until church people talk about you. Mary doesn't know what to do. The angel speaks to her and says, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Mary was like, what does that mean? Here it is. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. The kingdom will never end. Now, Mary probably couldn't grasp all of this that was happening, that she would give birth to the Savior of the world that would not only reign for a while, but would reign eternally. Later on, the gospel writer would declare, um, Paul would declare in Philippians that the name of Jesus, Mary's baby, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God the Father. Who, Which of us does not want the very best for our children? We want them to do more than what we've done. And God gives Mary a projective view of what's going to happen to this baby before it even happens. That her child is going to be something spectacular. It's going to happen because God has deemed it so. <clears throat> any mother, any father wants their child to do better than they did. I still pray for my son. I know you pray for your, even when they're grown, we still hope and pray that the best will happen to them. Mary is still concerned. She's perplexed in her heart. She says, how will this be? Mary asked, since I am a virgin. I mean, how, how's this going to happen? But I often say that you cannot receive the miraculous until you're willing to do the ridiculous for God and have faith in a God that's able to do 
exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. The angel answered, because God always has an answer. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the holy might of the most high will overshadow you so that the holy one born will be called the son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she was said to be barren is in her sixth month. Here's the word I like to give to everybody. Watch this now as my friend J.G. McCann, oh God, who left me all too soon. Verse 137 in Luke's gospel, remember this. Write this one down, put this in your library. He, the angel says, for nothing is impossible with God. For nothing is impossible with God. You're getting a bit of my sermon for Sunday. I might preach this the same way. And then with this, what happens? And how can you receive and be the beneficiary of the favor of God when God speaks to you? You have to be obedient to what he says. And Mary responds, unlike Zachariah who says, how can this be and raises all these questions? Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. Mary answered, may it be to me as you have said. Lord, have your will and have your way. Thy way, O oh Lord, not mine. Thy will, O oh Lord, not mine. Teach me to say, each day I simply plead, thy way, O oh Lord, not mine. Then the angel left her. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Somebody give him praise, honor, and glory. You know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. And for all that this season brings, we give you thanks. Help us continuously hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Help us, oh God, to be able to have the prayer of submission. Even Jesus teaches in the garden. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline your ear to us. Bless each person under the sound of my voice. Meet us at the point of our need. We love you, we praise you, we adore you, and we magnify you. And we thank you for this season that lets us know that Jesus understands what we're going through. That you allowed him to tabernacle with us in human flesh. We thank you, we praise you, we adore you. Bless each of us now. Give us your peace and your love that passes all understanding. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for this time together. Let me go ahead and greet some of you. I want to have one other prayer. One of our members is undergoing surgery today and we want to pray for her specifically. And I want to take a moment uh, and pray for her. So just bear with me. Um, let me just greet some of you. Angela Kelly, how are you? Um, there was someone there that just before that I, Mary Joseph, how are you? Um, Maxine, thank you. I just got your card. Thank you for your birthday card. Still receiving birthday gifts and open the Christmas gifts too. Joan, how are you? Natalie, Bryant Tra Crawford, Minister Ellis, how are you? Sharon Carter, Angela Kelly, Patricia Franklin, my good friend, how are you? I'm gonna give you a shout out today if the Lord should tarry. We were co-workers together. Ann Hamid, how are you? Phyllis Laria, how are you? How's each and every one? Sister Shirley Millard, Sister Sarah Gibbs, thank you. Good talking to you yesterday. Leroy, how are you? All of you, thank you so, so very much. 
let's pray for, um, I want us to say a prayer for Sharon Rock. She's a wonderful member of our church and she's undergoing um, surgery today, major surgery. She also works in our church office. She is in our um, choir, a wonderful voice, loves the Lord. <clears throat> she was actually working in the office with Miss um, Cord back in the day, even before I was even pastor. Let's pray. Dear God, we lift up Sharon Rock to you. She undergoes surgery, but we know that you are the chief surgeon with more healing him your garment than all the hospitals in all the world. God, the doctors and nurses that will attend to her right now. Oh God, we ask for deliverance. We ask for healing. We ask, oh God, that you will keep her in this moment and help her faith to fail not. You said you keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you. And somebody even now outside of Sister Rock is going through a serious diagnosis or procedure. We trust you, oh God. We know that you're able. And we know that really your word is still true that your son was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised by our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. We ask for healing. We ask for not only our physical bodies, but for our mind and our hearts and our souls. Hear our prayer now, O oh God. Incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm a little bit over, so let me just go ahead and give the benediction. And I'll see you on Sunday and um, join us on for our worship experience. And then plan to clear your calendar, join us for our Christmas Eve service, for our New Year's Eve service, which will also be on the Friday at 7.30. And then join us for our concert, which will be on next Sunday at 3 o'clock. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, the babe of Bethlehem, God's unspeakable gift to the world. We pray. Amen. God bless you.